On today's podcast, we're going to talk about how to find a work-life balance with Jason Bernsteel. Welcome to Lift Your Future, a podcast that teaches you coping skills through stories, methods, and proven techniques to improve relationships and outcomes in your personal and professional life. I'm Nicole Winkler, a licensed therapist and executive coach. On this podcast, we'll share relatable life experiences designed to help you grow. I will provide easy, practical ways to develop thoughts, feelings, and behaviors to impact your life, both personally and professionally. My goal is simple, to help you lift your future. Welcome, Jason. It's so great to have you on today. It's very nice to be here. I'd, I'd, I'd be lying, though, if I if I told you I wasn't incredibly uncomfortable talking about myself. So congratulations on even getting me here. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So, but, and, and I thank you, too, because you this invite has actually caused me to think a lot and uh, reflect a lot on on life and my experiences. So this is actually an awesome opportunity. So thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. And we can all learn. I believe we can all learn from everyone, but I, from what I understand, we can learn a lot from you. Well, I hope I can give you something useful today. I'm sure you'll give us many useful okay. tips. All right. So where, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with your career? Do you want to start with kind of growing up? Where do you want to start with your story? Well, I mean, I guess the quick the quick version is is born and raised here in Omaha, mm-hmm. uh, working class family, South Omaha area. Um, had a great childhood, frankly. I had very uh, two two wonderful parents, wonderful grandparents. Our extended family was always really close, and so I always had the benefit of uh, not only a lot of love around me, but a lot of different personalities and events and just richness in, in terms of activity. Mm-hmm. And I was, you know, I was never kept from anything, everything from funerals to celebrations to, you know, difficult life events. My parents were always very careful to make me a part of all that. Mm-hmm. And so growing up, um, I, I found it easy to navigate just about any sort of situation. Mm-hmm. And as I Got into. We moved away from South Omaha, and my folks built on uh, some land uh, in Sarpy County, more of a rural setting. Um, I found it really easy to navigate relationships and events. You learned about people. It sounds. I learned about people early on, Mm -hmm. and and I learned about empathy. And when you combine that with just a fair amount of intuition, um, getting into into music. And my family was always musical. That they had they had bands going back into the 30s and 40s here in Omaha. So I always had music around me, but school activities and then starting bands and um, friendships were always you know, relatively easy things for me because mm-hmm. I had the benefit of just that great, again, rich childhood experience. And um, it, it's, you know, as far as you know, career being career-minded and, and career goals, I always had a, an interest in in music mm-hmm. uh, from a young age. Started on piano, had cover bands through high school, and um, got out of high school. Well, well there, I mean, I have to stop you there yeah, a little bit. Please. There's a lot to learn through that experience, being a musician, starting a band, interpersonal relationships amongst people and creativity and respecting one another. And, and that's a lot to learn to navigate, too. I would imagine you learned... A great deal. A, gr- that a great deal, and, and again, um, what I call you know foundationally fortunate in that the first band I was ever in was with a buddy of mine, Jason Matthews, in sixth grade, and and we were one of four boys at La Platte Elementary, and he just happened to be a guitar player, and I happened to be a keyboard player, and he and his brothers, it was a kind of a family band. I was the only non brother there. They'd welcomed me in, and we had the 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 wonderful benefit of having his father who was in rock bands in the 60s, kind of coach us. I mean, we had a parent in this band camp. Yes. Right? So so he was teaching us Steppenwolf and Free and all these great songs that I would have, I didn't oh. know um, as, unless, if, if I wouldn't have been associated mm-hmm. with these guys. Mm-hmm. And, and um, he has since passed, but I've always been just really thankful for that experience is that I had not only the, the friendship of my buddy in the band, but his dad coaching us on how to, how to be a band, mm-hmm. you know? So I've often thought if I didn't have that, would I've ever 
done much more with music? I don't know. Maybe I would have found another way. Mm -hmm. But again, that was foundationally important to me. And so over the course of, you know, the, in the years after, I got into, you know, better and better bands. And I kept meeting people that were better musicians than me that would make me better. And after cover band, after cover band, after cover band, I thought, you know what? It's, it's, I want to do my own stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of doing the nine to one and playing mm -hmm. Casey and the Sunshine Band and Brick House and mm -hmm. nothing against Casey and the Sunshine Band and Brick House. <laughs> Classic. Good stuff. Good Classic. stuff. I'd play it right Definitely. now if I had a guitar. But it's there, you get to a point where you want to kind of your own, synthesize what you, what you know and what you've learned into something new and mm -hmm. fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, you know, fast forward, I went to graduate from high school, went to UNO for broadcasting, mm -hmm. and uh, worked a couple TV and radio gigs had my own audio video production business all the while playing music. And, uh, and at this time, pardon me for interrupting, yeah, no, please. at this time, was music the goal? Was, Always was central. Kind of making, yeah. making it in music? Of course. I, anybody who tells you coming out of high school and being in college and playing in a band, you don't have some notion or desire to make it. Absolutely. They're just, they're just not being honest with you. You know, yes. the, 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 the differentiator, though, is are you somebody who can take that and make the smart choices and have the dedication and focus mm -hmm. to turn it into a career, mm -hmm. or does it just continue to kind of be a hobby? Mm -hmm. And in the years after you know college and before getting married, I just kind of straddled that. You know, I was in a band called the Nines, and we played regionally. We'd play Chicago, Kansas City, and you know, travel around and your own music, our own music, which was a, was a total thrill to be able to you know pack a place like the Ranch Bowl. Um, oh, the ranch bowl! I miss the ranch bowl. Yeah, but it, we and we were always been fortunate to have really good original venues here in Omaha, mm -hmm. and so we really benefited from that to be able to hone our craft and get things tight and and get our presentation down with our own stuff was a real trip. I mean, to, to that, that's just a unique that's a unique uh, vantage point and a, and a unique gift I think to to be able to experience that. Um, and met my wife on radio she was on z92 she did she was a uh, courtney she was the news girl on todd and tyler for years and my band played on the radio show and that's when we met she had been divorced for a little bit and uh, she had a little boy and we got married and we've since had a little girl who's going to college in a couple of weeks oh my goodness wow. <laughs> but but just just over the course of all that span i've always played music music mm -hmm. has always been a part of my life and about 16, 17 years ago, I got into the real estate business, mm -hmm. which again, I just felt uniquely at home with because of back to my background mm -hmm. and, and diverse and rich experience as a kid growing up, there's, there's really no situation, no family dynamic, no personality mm -hmm. type that I can't adapt to and try to enrich mm -hmm. and make their experience better add value and add value them. yeah and it's mm -hmm. so it's been i got two great gigs and then being a dad and a husband i mean i'm i'm a really fortunate guy it's been it's been no lack of hard work i'm not gonna lie to you i mean i i, I haven't had much handed to me but the things that i've worked for have been very worthwhile and very rewarding yes so when did you recognize and i agree with you i mean we have to work hard mm -hmm. to achieve um you know some sometimes there is a stroke of luck but I don't think we get lucky. I think we put ourselves in a position to meet someone or create an opportunity. No question. Um, through that hard work. Okay. Because had you not done all of that, you wouldn't have been in a position or even been in that place standing right. there to meet that person. Right. Um, but with that, when did you know that your music career was going to stay kind of Midwestern and not expand you know, when I think about you know, being a baseball player, being a volleyball player, being a dancer, um, all those things, I think when we're younger, it's like we want to make it, make it. And so when did you recognize, realize, um, and maybe even come to acceptance, like I'm really happy with where where this is right now so I can have other things? That's a Gosh, that's a great question. I don't know if that's one that I actually prepared for, so I'll just kind of speak – stream of consciousness with you on that one. I love that. Um, you know, I think, so I mean, starting with the band and success and making it, though we, there's a lot of things we did right mm -hmm. and a lot of things we were fortunate to enjoy and that we had 
five and later four really good musicians that were friends that could laugh together and be creative together and put together songs that other people wanted to hear. That's a, a rare mix of the stars aligning and and, and that's magic. I have it is in a, in a way. Hearing that, no, that's we, magic. And, and we did, and we took we and we did every Tuesday for two hours. We enjoyed each other and we were creative. And that was a twenty years we had that, and that's more than most marriages, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's. We, we always had that, and we always knew we had certain advantages and gifts. But what we never, and we can get into this a little bit more. I think this might be worth exploring. What we never embraced and had the maybe the courage to admit mm -hmm. is that we weren't great at booking ourselves, and we were not the best at producing ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that we could put the songs together, we could make the arrangements, we could do the quick changes and all that fun and all that tightness. But we would have benefited and could have probably accelerated things if we would have just loosened up and let go of some of the control. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm terrible with that. I'm a control freak. My and my band members would tell you that. You know, it's I love collaborating with them, but there's certain things that I sh I just need to let go of the reins on and let happen. And it, it manifests itself in a very real way. And probably the last two records we made mm -hmm. is we brought in a producer by the name of James Fligi, and he took what we did and just amplified it and brought things out of us that we didn't know we have. Mm -hmm. Now, if we would have done that on the management side, who knows? I mean, it might be a whole different story. Things sure. work out for a reason. Mm -hmm. But if 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 we were speaking to why that band never made it, I think it would have less, less to do with the lack of ability and more to do with just a, a lack of making right strategic mm -hmm. decisions. And maybe even knowing the industry. And knowing the industry. And how to go about that. That's and, and how to. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's again, comes down to you don't have to do everything. Yes. Right? You need to figure out what you do well and let other people do the other stuff yes. and, and collaborate in that way. That's how things get done. I think any good success story, there's very few that somebody was a lone gun and plowed through everything and did everything themselves and, and didn't have support at the right time mm -hmm. in their career. Mm -hmm. And so that's something, if I could... I guess impart any advice on a young artist is find out where you're strong, mm -hmm. what you do well, mm -hmm. and ask for help on the other stuff, whether whether that's professional or musical or whatever. Well, yeah, I hear that that really can go over to business as well. Oh, no question. Like, this is what I'm good at. These are my strengths. This is what I'm not so great at. And we have so many resources today, more than we can even count. Yeah. Um, to help us with those things. And so that is a limiting belief. So kind of going back to you know what I work on with clients too, limiting beliefs. One of them is I can't trust anyone to do it mm. or I have to have control or I'm Guilty. perfectionist, yeah. <laughs> you know, or I'm perfectionist and it won't yeah. get done right if I don't yeah. do it or go over it again and, and again and again. But really we are limiting ourselves with those beliefs. And so I work with clients, I'm breaking those down um, because it served you until a certain point. So it did serve you until a certain point. And then at, at what point did it not serve you anymore? And could you have let go of some of that and really let other people do what they're good at and you get to focus on what gives you energy, what you value, and how to really break out further than you ever thought you could? No doubt. I mean, delegation is not a natural tendency for a lot of achievers mm -hmm. or a lot of really hard workers, mm -hmm. they tend to think we can just I can just work my way out of it mm -hmm. and I can work my way to success. Now it does take work, but boy, the benefit of having somebody to mm -hmm. fill the gaps for things that you don't have to have your hands all over. And this this is actually probably a good segue into the in the real estate thing. For That's me, what I was just thinking. Is that I I spent probably the first 10 years in the business just trudging and working and, and grinding and grinding out and doing everything and late nights and early mornings and running all over town. And then it dawned on me, you know what? There's things I don't have to, again, have my hands all over. There are, somebody can run a, <laughs> a yard sign to a house. Somebody could fill out this contract and I can just look it over and make sure it's okay. Yes. You know, a photographer can go shoot a house for me. I don't have to do it myself. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until then that things really exploded for me. Uh, in terms of, of production and numbers and, yes. and reach and serving my clients, um, there's no shame in that. I guess that's if there's if there's one message that there there, there just really isn't shame mm -hmm. in letting go a little bit. Even no, 
No, I, well, and I hear you saying I still had a pulse on everything. Yeah. I was still involved in everything, yeah. but other people could help me out. Yep. And how freeing that was, not only freeing in a way that was for you personally, and I want to ask too how that impacted your relationship with your wife, with your daughter, you know, with your stepson, you know, because when you're a real estate agent and you are grinding, you're never home. And if you are home, you're on the phone. Right. Um, and we're talking, yes, all internet days, but things weren't all done on the computer back That's, then. And, you know, even yeah. even 10 years ago, thing, you know, we've started with our DocuSigns and things like yeah. that, but that wasn't always the case probably when you were in real estate. No, I, 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 wish, I wish I would have got a hold of this idea sooner. There's mm -hmm. no question. I mean, I, you'd have to ask my kids this, but I think if you ask them, they, would, they wouldn't probably say that they felt like I was um, absent, mm -hmm. but there were certainly things here and there that I had to miss because my job was demanding it or mm -hmm. I was working weird hours mm -hmm. um, that I, I may not have had to miss if I would have been a little smarter about my business early on. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't get redos, I guess, where those things are concerned. Um, but my, it's, it has certainly improved my creative life and my relationships uh, to, to let go of some of that, mm -hmm. some of that control. There's, there's no question. Yeah. Well, and how do you, how have you found, I guess, balance with all of that? So it sounds like it has ebbed and flowed at times yeah. in your career, both with music and with real estate, yeah. but being part of a family and wanting to be there for all the things that you can be, uh, which I hear that that's a, a value for you. That's very important. I heard it when you were starting out, you know, family values were being together, spending sure. time together, being there for everything, the good, the bad, the ugly, um, you know, being able to take risks and be creative. And that's something that you continue to, you know, hone your skill. And, and maybe even in real estate, I would guess you've used that in that industry as well. Um, but so those are your values. How have you found balance with all of those over the years? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm amongst friends here, so I can tell you that I can't say I've quite found balance consistently. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I could tell you I found better balance. I've, I always want to have more time for music. Um, but I, I, the only prayer I have of making those things happen is when you're deliberate with your calendar mm -hmm. is when, okay, Wednesday, I'm not going to book anything but studio time. It's hard for me. It's so hard for me because I just, I've got this I don't know if it's just because my, my parents always work so hard that I've just got this, I don't say guilt, but a sense of obligation to my work mm -hmm. that even though the music thing is super important to me and being creative is important mm -hmm. to me, I always feel like I can't do it until I do this, uh -huh. until this is put to bed. Well, what I need to work on is saying, you know what, this is important too. Mm -hmm. And it deserves me blocking out a day. And if something else comes up, somebody on my team can handle it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need to be better at that. I acknowledge that that's an area for improvement. And I need to just do better. So, I'm going to check in with you on that. Our accountability. I'm going to be your accountability <laughs> partner on that. <laughs> yeah. Because it truly yeah. is. It, it is. And yeah. so I hear you saying, you know, time blocking. So time blocking, time blocking. is a Thank really, you. really useful strategy yep. to get more control of our time. But I have a caveat to that. You have to okay. protect that time. Because if I put it in my calendar and say, this is what I'm going to do then, and then I don't I don't actually hold myself like I would a client to meet a client. You would never not meet a client if it was in your calendar, right? Right. Yeah. So why, you know, would you or how, how do you not make yourself as important as a client? I will accept that support and pressure from you. <laughs> so, I'm just a text away. Uh, you're right, 100%. But, and, and I say that being, being somebody who has struggled with that as well. And when I was thinking about it, like, I don't trust myself. Why am I not as important as the other people I'm trying to serve? This will only make me better at what I do. You know, so really coming to that realization, which was not necessarily on my own. I have a very, I have a great coach, and then I also have uh, a very good friend. And so um, I'm going to pose the same question to you that he actually posed to me recently. And instead of balance, because I heard you say I still try to find balance. And so I, I view balance like we have this, um, what is that? A, a, not a seesaw, but 
when it's on the scale? table, a uh, scale. Okay. And so I'm taking one thing from over here and I'm putting it over there and here and there. And so he had posed this question to me, what's the difference between balance and harmony? Mm. And are you potentially looking for more work life, family balance or harmony? That's interesting. I Life is, I'm kind of going through a, a, a seismic kind of shift now in that my youngest is going off to college here in a couple of weeks, and it's going to be a real reassessment of how life looks, what's my importance, where do I need to be focusing my time. So, I mean, harmony, yeah, that's a wonderful aspiration, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what does that look like? I just don't know yet. Mm-hmm. I think, but I think part of, and you, you, you may agree, the the beginnings of finding harmony are identifying what you want. Mm-hmm. Another thing I struggle with a little bit is what do I what do I really want? Mm-hmm. And everything then flows from that. If once you then when, once you've established what it is you see in your mind's eye as being your goal, you can then put a plan together. But if you're living day to day, kind of just putting out fires and running around and just and being impulsive in and, the weeds, and it's and it's tough for an artist because. I'll, I'll wake up with idea more more days than not. I love mornings, by the way. This is another thing we might get into. Day parts like what, when you really thrive. I love mornings. I mean, I'm usually in bed by ten, no later. But man, do I love my four o'clock, five o'clock when I have the world to myself and focus. Nothing's getting pulled That's out. That's your bucket. time. I'm not. That is it. Jason time. Totally Jason time, right? So, so that that is that is one little. I wouldn't say it's blocked out. But it's something I really cherish. And then by, you know, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, phone starts. And you protect text. that time, it sounds like. I need but to be it's better. easier to protect it's it easier to protect when everybody else is sleeping. sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, right. So, um, gosh, Do not the, disturb is a setting on I your do phone. that when I do. Okay, so I do um, TM, Transcendental med- Meditation, twice a day, mm-hmm. which has saved my psyche, right? I mean, I take, I take my time in the morning mm-hmm. and at night. Uh, 20 minutes, mm-hmm. and I, that's when I hit the do not disturb, and that has allowed things to roll off. And if I don't do it for a couple of days, I feel you it. Can tell. It enhances my creativity, mm-hmm. but it's quiet time. It's like a mini sleep, almost in some ways better than sleep, is that you you completely, your brain starts to cycle at a place where uh, things that you're not intentionally drumming up flood into your mind. And through through this pursuit of quietude, it's almost as though you be, you kind of get on this this creative auto- autopilot that you're not fully controlling it, mm-hmm. but it's it's things are springing forth. Um, so that's been a that's been a great tool, and that that's been life changing in the last year. That's a, a recent development for me is is taking that time every day, mm-hmm. and that's pretty I'm pretty religious about that. There's, I know there's days when I don't do it, I can feel it, but when I do do it, everything is better. Everything is better. You're Just making that space. Making that space. Yes, yeah. to slow things down. Yep. We are in such a high-paced world, industry. We don't stop. Our phones are constantly on, dinging, pinging, vibrating, buzzing. It's on our phone. It's our watch. Um, and we are conditioned to look at that. And whether or not we give that time in the moment, it still takes up brain space. Yep. So really, I hear it's very important for you 20 minutes in the morning 20 minutes in the evening to protect that time and really clear your mind and give yourself that space. Crucial. Yeah, yes. Indeed. Oh my goodness. This is awesome. Thank you so much. No, I'm happy to talk about this. I mean, I didn't think I'd be happy to, but it's, it's turning out okay. Yeah. How's it feeling? Is it scary? Is it still? <laughs> so I'm, sitting, I'm sitting in the chair. Tell me about your childhood. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not therapy, so. Well, it feels um, like it. <laughs> Well, and then, so I hear you saying that you do have another very big life change coming up here soon with your daughter going away to college and extremely exciting time. Very, I mean, I'm not there yet. I have eight, nine year old girls. I'm looking, yeah. I know, and it'll be here before I know it. So I'm 10 years away from that. Um, And my guess is she's not home all the time anyway. No, she's, 
very social and and we we do have our little stuff that we do i mean she's she started playing guitar so we play guitar together which is a, a wonderful bonding experience and and uh you know there's certain movie series that are just kind of ours like all the marvel stuff we watch together and we, yeah. we have little things we did she's going away to college so i said okay we're doing some jujitsu classes together which is new to both of us and she's always up for it so i'm very blessed and my and my son's wonderful too he lives in uh dc he's, he, he's got a great job down there and he recently got married and and him and I have always been able to to kind of pal around and go on trips together and mm-hmm. and and bond that way. So I've been very fortunate in that I have, I have pretty good relationships mm-hmm. with the kids and and um, so it is going to be different. It's going to be different when uh, that empty nest thing happens. And I don't know if there's a rule book or a playbook for that. So we'll just have to take it as it comes, I guess. Yes, yes. And you will obviously find time to things to fill your time. But it's purposeful things I hear are really important for you. And then maybe even more of the opportunity to find that harmony or that balance. I think so. For yourself. Yeah. Where is she going? If I uh, Loyola in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Not too far. Not too far. Far enough, but not too far. She, she And she's excited. And she's at that age that, you know, you there's a, there's a point in life where your perspective is, what are all the great things that can happen versus... You get a little bit further down the road, and it's, what are all the things that could go wrong? She is totally in the, bring it on. Yes. Let's 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 have this adventure. Risk taking. When you created an environment for her to take risks to try new things, it sounds like that's something you value. You have passed on to her. Well, she's and she's up for it, and she's way better at that than I am. I mean, when I when I was at that age, I was always kind of you know, gosh, you know, we don't want to stick my neck out too far. Or, Gosh, do we really pack up band and move to the coast? I don't know. You know, but she's she is not that at all, and I I love that about her. And mm-hmm. she's she's much more like her mom in that in that respect. And that she is she has zero nervousness about this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, good for you. So I was not about to tell her, mm, you know, Chicago you know, could be a little rough. She's up for it, and I just want her to spread her wings and do her thing. So yeah, yeah, we're I'm I'm fortunate in that respect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm absolutely. For it. But still, a big change coming. Huge change. I mean. Yep. Some people have midlife crises around this Some time. People do. <laughs> let's hope. Yeah, let's hope that's not my fate. But uh, it doesn't seem to be that way yeah. at all. Um, you seem to have a really good self awareness and ability to look within and even do reflection on where you've been. And then I hear you saying maybe that vision is a little bit fuzzy. Um, and and so I could hone in on that vision so I have that direction of where I'm going to go. But for the most part, it's just a little fuzzy. You you have an idea. You just really need to. Give yourself time and space to explore that. Well, and I think, and I think, key to that too is is just you know at the risk of getting a little bit you know woo woo with everybody here is just really having the quietude to let the universe kind of speak to you mm-hmm. and listen to those voices. Mm-hmm. And if something doesn't feel right, don't do it. And if you're feeling drawn to do something, act on it mm-hmm. because there is just there is just a way there's a way that energy works that I think the the natural state is pushing you into where friction is least, Mm -hmm. but you don't always listen to that. Sometimes you take the harder role just because it's harder or you think that's what you need to be doing. Yes. But I think, I think, and sometimes it takes help. I mean, I have, I have a, a few just lovely friends that do energy work and Reiki and stuff. And I'm, and some of those sessions are profoundly valuable Mm -hmm. in that because it, because it gets you out of your monkey mind. Right, mm-hmm. gets you out of out of the thinking and overanalyzing and mm-hmm. and and overworking problems, and just opens you up to suggestion. And sometimes that that is your path. Maybe you don't need to know exactly what you want, but just listening to your intuition mm-hmm. will get you where you should be. Body, mind, spirit alliance. Mm, yeah. Instead of what's being better than that, right? Misaligned. Yeah. Because when we're misaligned with anything, even like our core, your values, if you're not aligned with your values, you're going to have conflict in your life or uneasiness, trouble sleeping, maybe things like that. So I hear in that too, I take the time to make sure that I'm aligned and and make space for that. Yeah. Important. Yes. So if you were going to give our listeners three tips on, you know, entrepreneurship, which Mm -hmm. I I consider your band and, and being involved in all of that, still entrepreneurship and management and relationship management, creativity, um, all of that, what tips would you give them? Gosh, I think whether it's music, uh, art, business, is quickly figure out 
what you're great at, Mm -hmm. also what you're not great at. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to delegate. I mean, those are very easy things. But that's that really is key, is, is hone in as soon as you can in life on what your strengths are and don't be afraid to acknowledge what they are. Some people think, you know, it's, it's ego to, to, to identify what you're great at and then maximize it and then, and then really go after it and do everything you can to spread it across the world. But that's, if you really want to make everybody around you happy, figure that out and max out on it mm-hmm. because you'll be a light. You will be a point of attraction for people when you're doing things that are in secret. Mm-hmm. Okay, can I take another little little Absolutely. Are we about out of time? What how's our time look? We're doing good on time. <laughs> We're doing great so on time. A wonderful manifestation of this is is I've always been a huge Prince fan. It, there's there's artists where when you listen to them and watch them, you don't feel like you're getting blasted with their art. You feel like almost like their art's as much coming out of you and meeting somewhere in the middle as it's just, just it like, is part of you. Yeah. It like so yes. Totally. Yes, so you, I you know exactly what those. you're you saying. You probably have those bands, you know, Ben, yes. ben you probably got the same thing. If you're a music love anybody who loves music and, and music is so powerful, that's probably another episode we could do about the power of music. But yes, yes. The the right. what really speaks to you. There are those there are those artists for everybody. Absolutely. You know, you have those those people, whether it's visual art or music art. So Prince has been that for me for a long time. And so um, I recently took a trip to, in the, in the wake of his passing, they've, the family's opened Paisley Park up, which is in Chanhassen, Minnesota. It was, his, it was his, his complex. He wanted a place where he didn't have to fly back and forth to California mm-hmm. and spend three hours wasted on a plane to, to record some tracks and then come back and then go shoot a movie mm-hmm. on another coast. He wanted a place where he could do everything in one place. So I wanted to, before my daughter went to, to school, I wanted to take her to Paisley Park and have her witness what determination and focus can look like. And it's a wonderful monument to that in that by the time he was 27, he had this place that he had custom built in the middle of nowhere. He bought three farms around it because he didn't want to be bothered. Mm-hmm. And he was doing everything his way. And he was called everything. I mean, every name in the book. I mean, from he had, for God's sakes, the vice president's wife down his neck for for the stuff he was saying. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was, it was, it wasn't easy for him, but through sheer acknowledgement of what his gifts were, mm-hmm. and then him insisting that he was not going to get derailed or discouraged. Or fit the mold of the industry. Or fit the mold. Mm-hmm. He was going to be a genius, which is you acting in accordance with who you most are. Mm-hmm. I think if that's if we define genius as that, that's what he was and he was just undaunted and he and and when you combine that with with a work ethic that was when he was so and he was so tiny. When you go to Paisley Park, everybody says, "Well, Prince was short. He was tiny. I mean, his waist was like this big, but you think, okay, he had a normal brain, normal heart. Maybe he was designed to where he could <laughs> this this heart was able to carry around a little tiny body for efficiency and he would work all night for two days straight and and outlast people and outlast producers and they would come in and change it and he would just keep Mm -hmm. going but magnificent things can happen Mm -hmm. when you when you acknowledge what you do what you love Mm -hmm. and then back it up with focus and work things like that can happen but he's one of Mm -hmm. hundreds of american stories Mm -hmm. that can point to the same type of of manifestation of success yes but it was powerful in seeing that and i think i mean i've been listening to this since my daughter was little i think she got it after going there she's like you know she saw the gold microphones and the outfits and the sound stage and the recording studio and her dad's like a gushing mess you know? <laughs> but i think but it's so much deeper it. than that oh, it's totally. so much yes. deeper than the microphone yeah. and the outfits Absolutely. and the guitars and and yeah. all of that it's really about what goes on inside a human mm-hmm. and how to create something and, and even through our work that we do not necessarily music music is one one way of doing that but how can we make a difference in the world what can we put out we all possess something amazing to put out into the world what boundaries do we need to set who do we need to ask help from to really, really propel ourselves to be the best us that we can be? And it, and it could very well be. It may not manifest in financial success or things mm-hmm. or monuments to yourself. It may be just being present 
in a beautiful moment. Yes. And that's how I look back on my, my most recent experience, my musical experience with the Nines, is that we had all these beautiful, creative moments that, you know, no one will ever hear. But for mm -hmm. us, it was really special. Mm -hmm. And there was levity and joy and creating something from nothing. And that's meaningful too. You don't have to have Absolutely, buildings. Absolutely, that's You don't meaningful. have to have a bunch of money in the bank. No. Because when, because trust me, as a guy that works in real estate and has cleaned out a ton of houses, your stuff doesn't matter. And it probably doesn't matter to your kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so most, so, of, yeah, so most of the time stuff, it doesn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. it may feel good. It may be a temporary kind of jolt for you. But really, the transcendent value mm -hmm. in a person is those experiences, mm -hmm. the the moments with your girls, mm -hmm. is those moments with musicians from me, those moments with my family. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's that is that's all we got. It because is because they're they're the, the the past doesn't exist, the future doesn't exist. Find beautiful moments, mm -hmm. and if you can use your gifts and talents to create those moments, you've done it. I mean, you've done it the best you can possibly do. I couldn't agree more, and I can't say it any better. Oh, great! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very very much. Thank you. Um, I, w I would be interested in maybe another episode about music and the power mm. of music in life. I'll bring the guitar next time. Yes, yes, that would be so fun. <laughs> you know, but really thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your heart with us you. and your journey and, and still what you've learned from it, what you're still learning, because I think we're always a work in progress, um, but for that vulnerability and, and connection to me, uh, the producers, and to our listeners. No, thank you to you and, and the boys. This has been a, a real honor, honestly. This thank is cool. You. And a first for me. So thanks for giving me <gasps> <Yay>! that. Yay. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, well, take care. Too, thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for listening today. Please don't forget to subscribe and leave us a five-star review.